Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another world who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. But before we join Superman, here is an important message. Fellas and girls, have you ever seen a squadron of American bombers roaring through the air in formation? Have you seen newsreel pictures of Uncle Sam's destroyers cutting through the seas on patrol in search of enemy subs and surface raiders? I'm sure you have, and I bet you were thrilled. You probably felt terribly proud, too. Well, if you've been buying war-saving stamps regularly, you have a right to be proud. Not only because those planes and those ships represent the fighting spirit of America, but because you helped to build them. Yes, sir, every time you bought a war-saving stamp, your money helped by the labor and materials that are used to make planes and ships and equipment to knock out the Nazis and the Japs. So next time you hear some boy or girl on your block say, Oh, shuck, what difference does it make if I buy one stamp or not? What difference can one dime make? You tell them it does make a difference. It makes a big difference. Tell them, for instance, that five dimes will buy enough fuel oil to take an American destroyer one full mile closer to its objective. Or that one dime will buy five forty-five caliber bullets. Tell them that if every boy and girl in the United States bought just one ten-cent war-saving stamp every day, it would add up to enough money to buy a lot of swift pursuit planes with which our Army and Navy forces could blast the Axis out of the air. And while you're at it, you might remind them that this is one way that all you fellows and girls can help win this war. Now, after all... Everybody can't join Uncle Sam's armed forces, but all of us can buy war-saving stamps. So talk it over with Mother and Dad tonight. Tell them you want to help Uncle Sam win this war by buying war-saving stamps regularly. Buy them every day if possible. And I'm sure that they're going to be glad to cooperate. And now, the adventures of Superman. Superman, in his disguise of Clark Kent, Lois Lane, girl reporter, and Jimmy Olsen, Clark's young friend, are now in colorful, romantic Arabia. Strange things have already begun to happen. Yesterday, Lois wanted to have her future read by a fortune teller in the bazaars of Mecca, and she was a little upset when the fortune teller, a look of terror on his face, refused to tell her fortune. Shortly afterward, as they continued to push their way through the noisy, crowded bazaars, Jimmy and Kent suddenly realized that Lois was not with them that she had mysteriously vanished. Has something happened to Lois? We'll know in a moment. Listen. I don't see Lois at all, Jimmy. She couldn't have fallen that far behind. We've got to find her, and right away. Sally, you don't suppose she's been... I mean, a fortune teller and everything? You don't think... There's no time for thinking, Jim. We've got to act. Well, what do we do? First, we've got to be sure that Lois hasn't stopped off in one of the shops to buy something. Oh, she wouldn't have done that without well, telling us. We'd better make sure. Come on. Wait. Mr. Kent, look. What? That man with the red hat on his head. The Fez. Yes, he's the same one you bumped into several times by accident. It was no accident. Mr. Kent, there's something queer about that bird. Look. Look at that that sort of half-smile on his face. Yes, there is something about the way he's looking at us that... Come on, Jim. We're going to have a talk with that Arab. Okay. Is he an Arab? Well, he's certainly dressed like one. Look. He's starting to move away through the crowd. He doesn't want to talk to us. Oh, it's coming. I noticed that, too. Well, we just have to catch up with him. Are you there? Wait a minute. Just a minute there. Oh, he's stopping. Look, he's turning around. Gosh, he's so tall and thin and strange looking. You there. I am oh. honored, Effendi. Do you wish to talk to me? Uh, you've been pretty close to us ever since we came into this street. My young friend here bumped into you several times. The streets are narrow, Effendi. I regret any inconvenience. No, it isn't that I want to talk about. A young lady with us. Did you notice her by any chance? Notice her? Yes. Uh, vaguely, yes. I was aware there was a female with you. And why do you ask? Is something amiss? Uh, no. No, thanks, thanks. Sorry to have troubled you. Shrekanani, Effendi. Shrekanani. Golly, he sure left in a hurry. 
Slid into the crowd like, like a snake. Didn't get much out of him, I'm afraid. I can't understand it, Jim. Something's happened to Lois. I'm convinced of it now. I am, too. What can we do about it? I don't know. Let me think. Jim, that fortune teller, you remember the one who refused to tell Lois his fortune because he said something terrible was going to happen to her? Yeah, but you said he was a fake, that it was just a trick. Oh, all fortune tellers are fakes, Jim. Which leads me to believe this one was in on whatever game is being played here. You mean you, you think he might know what's happened to Miss Lane? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Come on. We're going to find that fortune teller and make him open up. Maybe he won't talk. Maybe he... he'll talk if we have to choke every word out of him. Come on, Jim. There he is. Fortunes, fortunes. Tell your fortune. I want to see you, mister. Defend you wish your fortune. Uh, no, leave me in peace. But, Shirani, you are the one with the female. Leave me in peace. I'll leave you in peace, friend, after you tell me what I want to know. What has happened to that young woman? No, no, no. I will not tell. It is too... Never mind too... the build-up. She's disappeared. Vanished. Now, I want to know what's happened to she her. She vanished already so soon. What, what do you mean? Her fate was written in the sands. I dared not tell her, but I thought not it would come so soon. Oh, stop the mumbo-jumbo. I'm convinced you know what's happened to her. This is all part of some trick. Trick? Trick? You, you think I fool you? But certainly. You don't expect me to believe that you actually saw anything written in that silly sand of yours. Of course, of course. I might have known. You are not an oriental. You come not from the east. You could not possibly believe that I have power to tell the future. Of course we don't believe it. It's a fake, isn't it, Mr. Kent? Naturally. So be it. Fortune, fortune, offending. Oh, he's fortune. ignoring us, Mr. Kent. What are we going to do? Well, physical violence won't do any good with his kind, I'm afraid, Jim. Maybe we'd better try playing the game. What do you mean? And you'll see. Uh, look, friend. Yes? Uh, I, uh, I've got to find that young woman. She's vanished. Disappeared completely. Can you... Can you help me? Perhaps it is possible, and perhaps the sands will tell what you should do. Shall I read the sands, Effendi? Oh, yes, yes, please do. Very well. I, I stare the sands. I stare the sands so. And now I gaze upon what there is writ. What do you see? Wait, wait, Effendi, wait. Gosh, Mr. Ken, look. His eyes are positively blazing. Gee, maybe there is something in this fortune-telling business. Well, right? Nonsense, Jim, nonsense. Effendi? Yes? Here's what you must do if you would find the female. Yes, go on. When the muezzin calls from the minaret, follow on where the music shall lead. Huh? I don't understand. I can tell you no more. When the muezzin calls from the minaret, follow on where the music shall lead. That hardly tells us a thing when the muezzin calls from the minaret. Hello. What's going on back there? There seems to be trouble of some sort, Mr. Kent. There's a whole crowd of arrows milling around someone or something. Help! 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 Did you hear that, Mr. Kent? I certainly did. Someone needs help. Oh, come on, then. Let's help them before that crowd kills them. Not on your life. They tear us to bits. You wait here. Where are you going, Mr. Kent? You get the police. I'll be back in a jiffy. Ah, here's a dark doorway. No one can see me here. I couldn't possibly handle that mob as Clark Kent, but I certainly can as Superman. Now to step out into the street and join the fun. Up, up and at them. There. All right, out of the way. Out of the way. Let me get to that man. Oh, your wood, would you? Oh, neat and jolly good old boy. Jolly old Superman, give it to him. Jimmy, get back there. Get out of the way. Come on, in your life, I'm going to help you if I can. There, you take that. Nice work, youngster. I wish I could handle him the way you do. You're throwing him around by the dozens. They're scattering fast. Oh, looks like you've done the trick. Yes, it does. Take care of our English friend over there. I've got to leave now. Oh, but Superman, wait a minute. Up, up and away! Oh, golly. What a man. Uh, you there, boy. Uh, help me up here, will you? Help me up. Uh, Gosh, you're in a bad way, sir. Uh, Those Arabs would have killed you if it hadn't been for Superman. Well, I joy will think they did anyhow. The skulls cracked me on repair. The back sprained so I can hardly stand, but I'm not sure... Oh, no. No! What is it, sir? Me monocle. Your what? Me monocle. Me eyeglass. Oh, look at it. Look at it lying in the dust, shattered beyond recall. Oh, gosh. I thought it was something oh, pretty dear. bad the way you talk. It's only a monocle. Only a monocle? Only a monocle. Hear me, my dear misguided youth. That monocle has been twice around the world. No ordinary monocle. That played to the crowned heads of Europe. To the President of the United States, the Premier of France. Hey, what's going on here? Or rather, what stopped here? What happened to the riot? Oh, Superman took a hand in it. What? It didn't last long after that. Superman, eh? I wonder where he came from. All I know is he always manages to turn up when he's most needed. Oh, dear. Perhaps if I were to fit the pieces together with some sort of stick me bob What's the matter with him, Jim? He oh, got me. The Arabs almost killed him before Superman arrived. Oh? And all he cares about now is that oh. broken monocle. Huh. 
excuse me. Oh. My, my name is Clark Kent, and this is my friend Jimmy Olsen. We tried to come to your rescue. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Devilishly sporting of you. Too bad you couldn't play my monocle, you know. Oh, uh, excuse me. Frightfully neglectful of me. Forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. Oh. That's my stage name, you know. I've forgotten my real one. Oh, you're an actor. An actor? I am an interpreter, sir. An interpreter of the bard. Shakespeare, you know. Uh, William. Three times around the world, sir. Three times? I thought you said the monocle had been around the world twice. Uh, well, yes, I left it at home once. <laughs> oh, so yes. you're a Shakespearean actor. Oh, quite. Uh, how did you start this riot? What made those Arabs so mad? Uh, oh, oh, that, yes, yes. Frightfully sordid business. Dates, sir. Dates? Yes, I ate some dates from that stand over there. And the ruddy proprietor of the establishment demanded payment. Quite right, of course. Yes. I said I'd pay him by reciting a speech from the immortal works of Shakespeare... And I did so. What then? He hit me on the head what? with a slightly used pomegranate. <laughs> uh, awkward, no. Yes. I, I take it you haven't any money. Money? Money? Of what use is money, sir, to an interpreter of... What's that? Oh, the Muezzin, Mohammedan Clare of the Hour of Prayer. If you ask me, could use a few lessons in voice culture? Please, quiet. Uh... Gosh, look. All the Arabs are kneeling, facing the east. Yes. When the muezzin calls from the minaret, follow on where the music leads. Well, if there was anything in what that fortune teller said, we ought to hear some music or something, oughtn't we? Yes. Quiet, listen. Hear anything? No, and of course we wouldn't. It, it was nothing but just... Wait. Listen. I say, devilishly odd music, that. Where's it coming from? What interests me is where it's going to lead us to. Come on, let's follow it. But how? How can we follow music? Well, I don't know, Jim, but we'll try. Come on. I say, old man, may I come to... Huh? If you want to. Oh, right. You never know, I might be of some help. World travelers such as myself picked up a good deal of useful knowledge four times around the world. Gee, Miss Lane clapped you right across the face, Mr. Kent. I'm aware of that, Jim. Oh, forgive me, gentlemen. I don't wish to barge in where I'm not wanted. This is not good form, you know. But um, are you sure that young woman is your friend, Miss Lane? Well, if that girl isn't Lois Lane, she's a dead ringer for us. You know what, Mr. Kent? What, Jim? I think we're going crazy. First Miss Lane disappears, then she reappears in that old mosque. Superman tears the building apart and can't find her. Then we come back to this hotel, walk into the lobby, and there's Miss Lane. And then when you talk to her, she slaps your face. I... It just doesn't make sense. Well, it's going to. Come on. Uh, I say, now, wait a bit. Uh, no going off the deep end. Uh, better stop and think of my thoughts. Oh, going upstairs. I'm going after her again and have this thing out. The man in the red fez, Mr. Kent. He's gone. What, who? Oh, uh, you mean the Johnny that was standing over there near the magazine stall? Yes. Well, I've seen much in my travels, 22 times around the world, you know, but I must say I've never seen anyone quite oh. so evil-looking in my life. Oh, Why, say, there goes Kent grabbing hold of that girl's arm again. There's going to be trouble, laddie. Yoinks, underway. Right with you. I can't understand you, Lord. What does it all mean? What were you doing in that month? How did you get back here? By Jove, she's trying to shake off his arms. It's going to be a devilish scene. Speaking of scenes, I recall once I was playing oh, Hamlet in Stockholm. Please, my huh? no. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Stop trying to break away from me. What's come over? Yeah. I say, Kent, old chap, then let oh. me have a try, won't Why you? Why don't you just stare at us like that without saying a word? Miss Lane, what in the world? Oh, little man, let me handle this. Now, dear lady, you're comporting yourself in a most unseemly manner. I'm sure something must have happened to change your attitude toward your erstwhile friends. I uh, just... Oh, dear lady, don't stare at me as if I was something detestable. Speak to me. Confide in me. Do something, dear girl. Do something. Oh, she did it. I say, you struck me. Shocking. Oh, there she goes up the stairs again. Yes, and here comes someone who looks like a house detective if I ever saw one. I say, what's going on here? Oh, well, you see, dear boy, we well, were just I having... I see uh, that you three have been annoying that young woman. Now, we won't stand for anything like that around here. Watch your step or out you go. Oh, but you don't understand. We know that girl. She's a friend of ours. Yes, well, she doesn't act that way. I know, that's just the trouble. We we can't understand what's happened to her. She refused to recognize us. Just stood there without saying a word. What are you trying to pull, my friend? If you know the Countess as well as you say you do... The who? The Countess. Well, 
Well, you have given yourself away, not even knowing who she is. Countess who? The Countess Wojcicki. What? She's a Polish refugee, and she's... Now, wait a minute. That girl is no more a countess than I am. She's Lois Lane, a reporter for the Daily Planet, a newspaper in the United States. You're either mixed up, friend, or you're playing some game around here that I don't like. I tell you, that girl is a... I think we'd better forget the old thing. But if it happens again, out you go, bag and baggage. Okay. You see, we won't get anywhere with you. Come on, Jim. Let's get up to our room and try to figure this thing out. Where's Sir Mycroft? What? Oh, he was here a minute ago. Oh, here I am, my dear. Oh, oh, boy. For a minute, I thought you'd disappear, too. Oh, I used to disappear when I was playing the ghost of Hamlet's father. Uh, I say, Kent, yeah? I popped over to have a look at the register. There's a uh, Countess Wojcicki register right enough. Room 24. I thought the information might be of some value. You'll never know. What? Okay, let's get upstairs. Uh, right here. Strange people, the nobility, and your duchess once. A remarkable woman. Collected antique furniture. She had a simply devastating Louis XIV table. Oh, extraordinary woman. Had six legs. What? The duchess had six legs? Oh, no, dear lad. The table, not the duchess. Oh. Our room is right down this corridor, Sir Mycroft. Number 19. I say it's awfully decent of you to offer to put me up, Kent. Of course, I wouldn't intrude under ordinary circumstances, but uh, since you insisted... Hey, here's room 24. Didn't you say that was the Countess's room, Sir Mycroft? Well, Countess or Miss Lois Lane, whichever you choose, dear boy. Wait a minute. Yeah? I've got to find the answer to this. If that girl is Countess Wojcicki, then... Well, then Lois has a double. Well, they say that everyone has a double somewhere in the world, you know. But if that girl isn't Countess Wojcicki... Well, then, then I don't know. Uh, look here, old Tootle, may I offer a pointer or two? Yes, of course. Well, I must say we approach the little lady a bit, um, or shall I say violently down there in the lobby. Now, if she is really a countess, if Miss Lane does have a double and we made a mistake, uh, then it's hardly any wonder she slapped our faces. Well, what do you I suggest? was about to suggest that we knock very quietly at her door, introduce ourselves, explain the situation, and then, by Jove, uh, see what happens. Sounds like a good idea. Well, we can't lose anything trying it. All right, here goes. Um. Yes? What is it? Jumping Jiminy. It's the guy in the red fed. By Jove, so it is. Come in, gentlemen, come in. I believe we have met before. You are the young man who stepped on my foot in the street this afternoon. Yeah. What can I do for you? We we understand that this room belongs to a certain Countess Wojcicki. Countess Wojcicki. I'm afraid I have never heard of the lady. You've made a mistake, I am sure. Mistake, sir? Never make mistakes, by Jove. That's the number on the register downstairs. You must have misread. I never gave a misreading in my life. I'll have you know I'm an actor, sir. Memorize it, sight. I am very sorry. You have made a mistake. There is no countess, no one beside myself in this apartment. I see. Well, I'm sorry. I guess we have made a mistake. Thanks very much. You're quite welcome. Just the rook, Apprendi. Come, Jim. The mic off. Well, what do you make of that? Uh, there's a good deal of hugger mugger going on here. Are you sure that register said room 24? Positive. Positive, by Jove. Of course, I can pop downstairs and have another look at the bloody thing, if you like. No, no, don't, don't, don't bother. Let's get to our own room. Mm, well, I have time to think. Golly, Mr. Kent, this thing gets more and more complicated. If that is the Countess Wojcicki's room, then what in the world is Mr. Red Fez doing in there? It's not me, Jim. I can't fathom it either. Oh, leave it to me, lads. By Jove, I'll solve this riddle for you. You, sir, my cross? Oh, but certainly, my lad. Twenty-seven times around the world in my capacity as interpreter Say, of Shakespeare. Just how many times have you been around the world? Oh, uh, so many, I can't remember, really. <laughs> have the same trouble with that as I have with my name, you know. Can't remember my real name either at all. Uh, oh, is this your room, Kent? Yes. There we are. Come on in. Oh, right -o. Oh, your hospitality, Kent, is... Well, by Jove, I don't know how I can thank you. I don't really. Forget it. Uh, Just make yourself at home. Great Scott. Mr. Kent, what... Jumping Jiminy. I say, I didn't know you had a young woman with you here. Who is that little lady asleep in the chair there? I... I say, it looks like... Don't tell me it is. Yes, by heaven, it is. It, it's Lois. She's sitting in an easy chair, fast asleep. She's sitting in that chair, Jim, but she's not asleep. She's unconscious. Golly. Oh, by Jeffrey, I'm out of my depth, really. Over my head and all that. Is this really Miss Lane or the Countess Wojcicki? Uh, Lois, I'm sure. At any rate, she's wearing the same clothes Lois wore earlier in the day. Lois. Lois, can you hear me? 
By Jove, sir, there's no more life in her than there was in the ghost of Hamlet's father. We've got to bring her to. She's the only one who can solve this mystery for us and solve it fast. Get some water, Jim. Are you back? Oh, poor girl. Kent, I, I trust she's not badly hurt. Oh, I don't think so, Sir Mycroft. There's a lump on her head. She was evidently slugged. Oh, Honey should be all right, though, once we manage to bring her to. Oh, this whole jolly business is really the most amazing, I mean to say, fantastic, weird, what? Yes. Here's the water. Okay, now let's see if we can snap her out of it. There, now. Lois. Lois, can you hear me? Oh, come on, Lois, snap out of it, snap out of it. It seems to be in a pretty bad way, doesn't it? Yeah, something tells me we better get a doctor. Jim, call the desk. Uh, okay. Lois. Lois, can you hear me? Hello. Lois. She doesn't respond at all. Probably needs a stimulant or something of the sort. You know, I recall once when I was playing Macbeth. Harrowing play, I must say. Listen. Uh, yes, Kent? That bird in the red fez has something to do with all this. A doctor on his way, Jim? Yes. Then I'm going back to room 24 and have it out with our oriental friend. This game has gone far enough. I'll go with you. All right. You'd better stay here, Sir Mycroft, and keep an eye on Lois. Oh, come on, me, old boy. I shall guard her with me very life. Uh, Good. Come on, Jim. You really think he's behind all this? I'm sure of it. He's going to tell me all about it if I have to beat it out of him. Gosh, you, you're sort of a different person when you get mad. Huh? Even your voice gets deeper. Oh. Oh, that. I, oh, I'm I'm a little hoarse. Well, n- never mind. Here, here's room 24. All right, come on, Jim. All right, you, I want to have a talk with you. Jump in, Jiminy. Do you see what I see? Yes, Jim, I do, but I don't believe it. I... Superman, in his disguise of Clark Kent, Lois Lane, girl reporter, and Jimmy Olsen, Kent's young friend, are now in Arabia, where Lois vanished in a crowded street in Mecca. Later, the girl reporter appeared in the doorway of an old and abandoned mosque and promptly disappeared again. Returning to their hotel, Kent and Jimmy and their newfound friend, Sir Mycroft Bittersweet, a Shakespearean actor, saw Lois talking to a man in the lobby of the hotel. When Kent spoke to her, she slapped his face and went up to her room, room 24, by the way, registered in the name of a Countess Wojeska. Going to their own room, room 19, Kent, Jimmy, and Sir Mycroft found Lois slumped, unconscious in a chair. How could Lois be in two rooms at the same time? Leaving Sir Mycroft with the unconscious girl in room 19, Kent and Jimmy made their way down the hall to room 24. Opening the door, they burst in unceremoniously, only to find another surprise. Jumpin' Jiminy, do you see what I see? Yes, Jim, I do, but I don't believe it. I I can't believe it. Forgive me, gentlemen. I don't wish to be rude, but is it customary to invade the privacy of one's room in so high-handed a manner? Mr. Ken, who can this be? This one's wearing a beard and a monocle and... Jiminy, look at the length of that cigarette holder. This is also customary to add insult to injury by commenting rudely upon the appearance of the person whose privacy you have invaded. Well, there's, there's something very strange here, I... Strange I... indeed. I should say, sir. I suggest you and this, this insolent boy leave my room at once. I understand how you feel, but uh, you, you don't understand. I understand that you have had the audacity to enter my room no, and no, I... No, wait, please, let me explain. I am not interested in your... One second thought, perhaps I am. Explain what excuse you might have for bursting in here as you did. Well, first of all, we mistook a young woman in the lobby for a friend of ours, Lois Lane, who disappeared earlier in the day. We understood that this girl was registered here as the Countess Wojeska and that she occupied this room. The Countess Wojeska does occupy this room. Well, then, what are you doing here? I, my dear boy, happen to be the Count Wojeska, the Countess's husband. You, what? you are the Countess Wojeska's husband? Oh, really, sir? Who is the man in the red fez? Something wrong, Count? You two? You two are starting this stupid business of the man in the red fez? What's he talking about? I will tell you what I am talking about. And then I will tell you to get out of here and stay out. This joke has gone far enough. What joke? What are you talking about? When my wife and I arrived in Arabia over a week ago, we received an anonymous note warning us to be careful of a certain man in the red fez. Golly, the same man we saw in the hotel lobby only a few minutes ago. Have you quite finished? Oh, I'm sorry. Traveling toward Mecca, we've stopped in many places, of course. And in each new place, we have received another note, all of them saying the same thing. Be careful of the man in the red fez. Then you don't know who the man in the red fez is? You have no idea? Of course I have no idea. And I tell you frankly, I'm sick to death of this stupid joke. Now, wait a minute. If you really don't know who he is, what was he doing in this room ten minutes ago? Friend, I'm afraid you are out of your mind. Oh, but he's not. I was with Mr. Kent when he entered this room before. Now, look here, sir. A lot of things have been going on here you obviously aren't aware of. 
To begin with, the man in the red fez was sitting in that chair over there ten minutes ago. Not only that, but he claimed this was his room and said he had never heard of the Countess Wojcicki. You almost make me believe you. You sound very sincere. I am sincere. That's what I've got to make you believe. This thing isn't a joke. As a matter of fact, I'm convinced something is going on here that... Well, it's pretty terrible. Something we've got to stop. What sort of thing? I don't know. That's what I've got to find out. Tell me, what does your wife look like? Have you a, a picture of her? Yes, but she'll be out in a moment. You can see her for yourself. You mean she... She's here now? But of course she's in the next room dressing for dinner. Well, she wasn't here a little while ago. Ten minutes ago, as a matter of fact. The man in the red fez said she wasn't anyway. I assure you she is here now and she was here then. Would you ask her to come out for a moment? Of course I will call her and... No. No, I will not. This is utterly absurd. I will not disturb her. She must have had a fatiguing day shopping in the bazaars. Well, then would you show us the picture you have of her? Oh, yes, yes, I will do that. And then, if you will, please go. We've had so much trouble, we want no more of it. We are refugees, you see. We escaped from Poland just in time. I understand, and I'll try not to bother you more than is necessary. Here is the picture. An excellent likeness of my Thank wife. You. What? Why, it's Lois Lane. That's who it is. I don't know what you are talking about. Your wife is almost a perfect double for this friend of ours, Lois Lane. Well, that's highly interesting. Now, if you would please go... Oh, no, not yet. Now, look here. If you don't leave this room at once... Listen to me. Your wife is in danger, grave danger. I begin to see a few things now. The man in the red fez following us in the bazaars. And Lois's disappearance. Don't you see, Jim? They thought Lois was the Countess with Jessica. Sure, that must have been it. They took her to that abandoned mosque. But why did they let her show herself in the doorway? Oh, who knows? Perhaps to add a little mystery to the game they're playing. The fortune teller, the strange music leading us on toward the mosque... Lois appearing in the doorway, all an attempt, Jimmy, to convince us that Lois, or the Countess, as they thought, was in the hands of a power stronger than ourselves. I get it. And then they discovered their mistake. They realized that Lois was not the Countess with Jessica. They knocked her out and brought her back to our room. That's how she happens to be lying unconscious in our room this very minute. But what in heaven's name would they want with my wife? You're a wealthy man, I take it, Count. Well, of course. There is such a thing as ransom. Ransom? As I see it, the man in the red fez is a member of a band. Maybe the head of it, for all I know. But there's one thing I'm sure of. They're after the Countess. And once they get her, you'll pay dearly before you get her back. I must get in touch with the police here and make it at once. Now you're beginning to talk sense. Those warnings I received in the... Ma uh, hello, uh, operator. Give me police headquarters. Yes, 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 quickly, please. Those warnings, they, they really meant something, then. No doubt of it. But who could have sent them? Who? Uh, hello? The chief of police, please. This is Calva Jessica speaking. Thank you. As I was saying, sir. Wait a minute. What, what is it? Why, why, why do you look at me? Hang up, quick. Hang up? Well, you mean... I mean, put that phone down. Mr. Kent, what... Oh, you must be out of your mind. Hello, is this the chief of police? This here. Ah, how dare you, Mr. Kent? Give me back that phone. Gosh, Mr. Kent, what's come over you? I just thought of something. Do me a favor, Count Wojcicki. Step into that dressing room and ask your wife to come out here. I told you before I will not disturb her. Well, if you won't disturb her, I will. Wait! I don't know what you are driving at, but... Very well. I will ask her to come here myself. Stephanie, my dear. Come here a moment, please. Stephanie! Stephanie! Good heavens, I, I can't explain, but... But she's not there, just as I suspected. But she was in there only a few minutes ago. I don't think she was. How do you know she was in there? Why, I was about to enter her dressing room when she called out to me. She said, I'm dressing, darling. I'll be out in a minute. Don't you see? She must have been there. Well, she was there, all right, but the man in the red fez was with her, forcing her to say just that. Is there any other way out of that room? Yes, yes, there is another door which leads to the corridor. And that's the way they went. The police, I must get them now. That's exactly what you must not do. What? My wife has been abducted by a band of cutthroats. I must do something to save her. Call in the police and you'll never see your wife alive again. Don't you see what's going to happen? You'll get a ransom, though, telling you to leave a sum of money at a certain place. And you'll also be warned not to get in touch with the police. If you do, your wife's life will be forfeit. Then, then what am I to do? I don't know yet. I've got to have time to think, to figure out a plan. I... Wait a minute, I'll answer that. Hello? Why, why, yes, yes, Count Wojcicki's here. Certainly, just a moment. It's the police calling back to find out about that call you made. Now, say anything you like, but stall them off. You sure? We'll need them later, but not now. Very well. Hello? Yes, yes, this is Count Wojcicki. Yes, yes, I did call you. 
Well, I'm I'm sorry, but I I was forced to hang up. Well, I I wanted to know if uh, if I had to have my visa looked over by the local police again. Oh yes, yes I I, I know usually it is not necessary, but well, I I thought I heard someone say. Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much. Good. What? Oh, no. No, no there, there, there was nothing else I wanted to talk to you about. Nothing, nothing at all. Golly, can't we, Jessica? Don't take it too hard. We'll find a way to help I you. I cannot help myself. My wife is very dear to me. I can understand it. It's amazing that she should bear such a striking resemblance to Lois Lane. Oh, Lois ought to regain consciousness by this time. Come on, let's get back to our room. May I come with you? Oh, by all means, Count. I hope you will forgive my seeming rudeness when you first came in. That's all right. What's our next step, Mr. Ken? Find out everything Lois can tell us and then try to get on the track of these kidnappers. There's hardly any doubt Count Wojcicki will receive a ransom note soon. They certainly must be a clever band. Oh my gosh, we went into that mosque only a minute or two after Lois had been seen standing in the doorway. And she was nowhere to be found. It's true. I practically tore that place apart brick by brick. You what? Uh, I mean, uh, I stood by while Superman pulled the place apart. No sign of Lois anywhere. They must have taken her out through a side door and escaped under cover of darkness. Yeah, it was pretty dark by that time. Lois will be able to throw some light on it. Now, here's our room. Now, come right in, Count. It... Well, what in the world? Jumping Jiminy. Lois! Sir Mycroft! Well, this doesn't make sense. Well, I'll say it doesn't. What would the Red Fez gang want with Lois now that they've got the Countess Wojcicki? Even though Lois and the Countess do look alike. One moment, gentlemen. Am I to understand that when you came to my room, you left two people in this room? That's right. Miss Lane and an old actor, Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. And they're not here now? Well, obviously. Oh, I'm confused. As I understood it, this Miss Lane was originally spirited away because she resembled my wife, the Countess. Yes. And she was later returned because the band discovered that she was not the Countess. Now... What reason would the same band have for spiriting her way again? I, I don't know. I haven't the vaguest idea. Then why should they take Sir Mycroft also? Maybe they didn't. What do you mean, Mr. Kent? I do not follow your reasoning myself, Mr. Kent. Well, let's be logical. We're just assuming that the band did capture Lois and Sir Mycroft, yet we can't think of one good reason why they should have done so. Perhaps there is no reason. And perhaps they didn't spirit them away. Oh, well, if they didn't, what's happened to them? I don't know, Jimmy, but I certainly intend to find out. It seems to me... Look out! What? Good, Good heavens. Look, look there in the wall, a knife. It was thrown through the window. Yes, I saw it coming. You saw it coming? Well, how in the world could Step you... Step back a minute, Jim. Let me get to that window. Hmm, there's an old house across the street, boarded up and apparently not in use. Someone standing at one of those windows could have thrown that knife. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go get him. Easy does it now, Jim. Whoever threw that knife made sure of his escape beforehand. He's out of that building and well on his way by this time. Yeah, I guess you're right. But you said you saw that knife coming. How could you have? Golly, you'd have to have the eyes of Superman to see anything like that. To see a knife flying through the air at that distance, Mr. Kent? Oh, I, 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 I didn't really see the knife. I just saw something gleam in the sun. Realized it might be a knife and... Say, we're a fine bunch of detectives. Here we stand talking about the knife instead of doing something about it. Let's have a look at it. Which of us do you think that knife thrower wanted to kill? He didn't want to kill anyone. See, here on the blade of the knife, a paper. It's a message. Oh, what's it say? It's addressed to you, Count. Oh, is it a message about my wife? Tell me quickly, what does it say? It says, your wife is safe and will continue so unless you go to the police. You will hear from us again within 12 hours. It's signed with a, with a red fez. Red fez. Yeah, see here, Jim? A fez drawn in red ink. Oh, those notes of warning. They told me to beware of the man with the red fez. Why didn't I take them seriously? You can't blame yourself for this, Count. The red fez band would have gotten your wife in any case. What we've got to do is get her out of their hands before something happens to well, her. Don't forget Lois and Sir Micron. No, of course not. Arabia. Land of mystery and adventure. Golly, we're sure getting our share of it. Yes, and I don't think it'd be a bad idea to dish a little of it out. What do you mean, Mr. Kent? I'm going to leave you two for a while. Both of you stay right here until I get back. And for heaven's sake, don't disappear. Where are you going? To the police. Well, you can't do that. If they know we are in touch with the police, they will surely kill my wife. I know, but... You cannot go to them. It was you yourself who prevented me from doing the same thing. Well, they'll be watching you like hawks. But I don't think they'll be watching me. And we can count on the police to be discreet, I'm sure. 
Now, wait here, both of you, till I get back. But, Mr. Better Kent... Better do what I... Mr. Kent says, Count Wojeska. He usually knows what he's doing. Very well. I leave myself entirely in your hands. Good. I won't be long. Better keep this door locked till I return. Okay. I don't think I'll be going to the police. This is a job for Superman. Off with this suit. <clears throat> I can leave through this window. I've got a visit to pay to a certain fortune teller. Up! Up! And away! Red cape screaming in the night wind, Superman speeds through the air over the rooftops of Mecca, his strange flight cloaked in darkness. Below him, the colorful life of the ancient Arabian city. And finally, there filters up to him from the streets the familiar cry his keen ears are waiting for. Superman comes to a landing nearby and then makes his way through the crowded streets toward the fortune teller. So colorful are the costumes of the Arabs that the blue and red costume of Superman goes unnoticed. He reaches the fortune teller and stands fortune, before him. Tell your fortune, Effendi. Read your future in the sand. No. I'm going to read your future and not in the sand. I understand you not, Effendi. I'm going to tell your fortune. I have the power to tell you exactly what's going to happen to you in the next five minutes unless you come across with some information I want. Earlier today, you told the fortune of a young woman. Or rather, you pretended her future was so horrible that you wouldn't tell it. Later, you told the man who was with her that if he wanted to find her, he must follow certain clues. I do not recollect... Oh, yes, you do. You're as much a part of this little game as the man in the red fez or anyone else. You make mistake, Effendi. Go away. I've made no mistake. Now, look. See the minaret way up there? I am not blind. Tell me what I want to know, or I'm going to hang you on that minaret until you change your mind. Please, Effendi, let us have no more of this insanity. Go away. All right, you're asking for it. No, no, take your hands off. Take your hands off. Ay, 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 help, help. This foreign devil attack me. Help in the name of our... Too late for help now. Up to Daisy. Oh, I am... Oh, I'm flying through the air. Put me down. Release me. Release me in the name of Allah. Uh, oh. oh. Here we are at the top of this minaret. Now hold still while I tie you to it with your belt. No, no. Hold still no. or I may drop you. You don't no. need to be a fortune teller to figure out what would have happened then. Oh, hear me, Effendi. Gracious Effendi. Who you are, I know not. But I will do anything. I will say anything. I will tell you anything, anything at all. That's better. Now oh. then, out with it. Where is the Countess Pajeska? I have never heard that name before. You lie. By the beard of the prophet, I swear that... Who is the man in the red fez? I do not know. Now listen know. to me. You see that crowd below, all of them looking up here, yelling and waving their arms? Yes, I see Tell them. me what I want to know or I'll you join that crowd down there. I'll throw you off this minaret. No, no, no. I would tell you if I knew, I swear it, but I do not know. The man in the red fez has not even paid me yet. Paid you for what? For doing what I did, for refusing to tell that girl's fortune, for telling the young man and the boy to follow the strange music when the muezzin called from the minaret. But I swear to Fendi, I know not who he is. When do you get paid? Tonight, within the hour. He promised he would come by and pay me. Within the hour, eh? All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you. No, no, not that. I have a wife and six children. Listen to me and stop babbling. Uh, Do as I tell you and no harm will come to you. I'm going to take you back down to the street. You will wait there for the man in the red fez. When he arrives, take your money and say nothing. A friend of mine, Clark Kent, will be there to follow him. Is that understood? Yes, clearly. One word and... Oh, Mayor Cameron, kick me in the face if I utter one syllable. I swear it, Effendi. Not one single part of a syllable will I speak. Good. Now I'll take you down. Oh, that crowd down there. How will I explain, Effendi, what has taken place? You're supposed to be a man with mystic powers. Tell them I'm a friend of yours from the other world. Excellent, Effendi. <laughs> it will increase my business a hundredfold. Now let me get this belt of yours loose from around the minaret. Effendi, I have a thought. Together we could do excellent business. Uh, would you join me as a partner? I will gladly give you half the business down, and you can... Down. Oh, I, uh, uh... Mr. Kent, these bazaars seem even more crowded at night. A lot more colorful, too. Yes, Jim. Golly, do you really think we'll get our hands on the man with the red fez? If he shows up, and I have reason to believe he will, yes. Well, how'd you get that fortune teller to confess so quickly? Just by threatening him with the police. He's the type that scares easily. Oh, there he is over there now. 
Come on, Jim. I want to find out if Red Fez has arrived yet. Yeah, we may be too late. You shouldn't have come back to the hotel. I had to be sure you and the Count were all right. You never can tell what might happen in this fantastic place. Are uh, you? Uh, has he arrived yet? My name is Clark Kent. Uh, Effendi? Has he arrived yet? The man in the red says. Oh. Oh, no, Effendi. Good. Well, I'll be waiting over there. Remember now, not a word. Not a... Oh, no, no, Effendi. Right. Come on, Jim. You can stand in that doorway over there. Jim! Huh? Oh, coming. What's the matter, Jim? Why are you staring at that fortune teller? He's, he's got a long, crooked scar on the back of his right hand. Well, what of it? What of it? Golly, Mr. Kent, didn't you ever notice? What? We know someone with a scar like that. We do? Who? Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. Sir M- Jim, you don't mean... I certainly do. That bird's no fortune teller. It's Sir Mycroft himself. You say there's something strange about that fortune teller, Jim? Yes. He's got a long, crooked scar on the back of his hand. Well, what of it? There's only one other man with a scar like that. And that man is Sir Mycroft Bittersweet, the Shakespearean actor. Jim, you can't mean that. I certainly do. He's no fortune teller. He's Sir Mycroft himself. But that isn't possible. I had a long talk with that fortune teller less than an hour ago, and he's certainly the same one I... No. Now that you mention it, there is a slight difference. Look, the Countess with Jessica may be Lois's exact double. But if two people have that identical scar in the back of the same hand, well, I'll believe anything. Even that the moon is made of green cheese. Well, if you say Sir Mycroft had that same scar on the back of his hand, then our so-called fortune teller over there must be Sir Mycroft. Unless... Unless what? Well, that scar might be painted on his hand, you know. Oh, golly, Mr. Ken, I'm all confused as it is. Two hours ago, we left Sir Mycroft in that hotel room, trying to bring Lois back to consciousness. Now we find him here disguised as a fortune teller. Now you say it may be the fortune teller disguised as Sir Mycroft. Well, we've got to take into consideration all You know something? I'll bet I'm not Jimmy Olsen. I'll bet I'm Lois Lane disguised (laughs) as Jimmy Olsen. Or maybe I'm the Grand Mufti of Zululand. I know just how you feel, Jim. All this is a bit confusing, but I think we're going to get to the bottom of it pretty quickly. Well, good. Let's grab Sir Mycroft. Uh, 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 no, no need to rush into things. Let's be sure first that he is Sir Mycroft. Come on. What are you going to do? Move closer to him and see if we can recognize his voice. Okay. All right, quiet now. We can hear him from here. Fortunes, tell your fortune, Effendi. Read your future in the sands. Oh, rummy sort of business, by Jove. No one wants to see him get his fortune told. Oh, well. Mm. Two fortunes for the price of one. Two fortunes for the price of one. Did you hear that? I certainly did. Come on, we're going to have a little talk with Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. Let me do the talking. Okay. Fortunes tell you very interesting fortune. We'll even lie to make it interesting. Tell fortune, Effendi, special reduced rate. Uh, will you tell my fortune? A uh, pleasure, Effendi. Tell me what you wish to know. I will stir the sands and read the future for you. Well, it's this way. An hour or so ago, my young friend here and myself left a certain Sir Mycroft Bittersweet alone in our room with a certain girl named Lois Lane. Ah. When we returned to the room, both Sir Mycroft and the girl were gone. Now, what I want to know is, where is the girl? And Sir Mycroft? Oh, I know where Sir Mycroft is. You do, Effendi? Oh, yes, yes. He's probably fleeing for his life, thinking all sorts of horrors are after him. Uh, A Shakespearean actor, you see. All talk, but really no courage at all. I figured him for a coward the moment I saw him. A weak-minded, frightened... Oh, no, stop. What? I say cease, desist. By Jove, Kent, how can you say such things of me? Here I am, risking my very life. Listen, Mr. Kent, do you hear what I hear? That sounds like some microphone. Well, the East is a strange and mysterious land, Jim. To think of this Arab fortune teller sounding like some micro. Well, I not only sound like him, I am him. Poor fellow's out of his mind. Yes, the poor man really believes he is Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. Oh, devil take it, I am Sir Mycroft. But you couldn't possibly oh, be... Oh, Kent, old Chutney, for heaven's sakes, it's I, I, I tell you. I, Sir Mycroft, concealed under several layers of theatrical grease paint. Uh, look here, old boy, you see, it comes off on my fingers, you see. By <laughs> golly, it does, Mr. Kent. 
Maybe this man is Sir Mycroft after all. Oh, a wonderful boy, a most deserving boy. But, Jim, if this man is really Sir Mycroft, what's he doing disguised as that Arab fortune teller? Well, I can explain everything by Joe. Go ahead, then. We're listening. Well, after you and the laddie here popped off to investigate room 24, leaving me with the unconscious Miss Lane in room 19... It occurred to me that Miss Lane might not yet be out of danger. What do you mean? Well, consider what had gone before, old boy. Miss Lane had vanished while walking with you in the bazaar. Then later, we'd seen a woman whom we mistook for Miss Lane in the lobby of your hotel. And we discovered that this woman was actually registered as a Countess Wojewska. Uh, baffling, what? Yeah, that's putting it mildly. Well, I've never believed in exaggerating matters, you know. <clears throat> well, to continue with this ruddy business, we find Miss Lane in your room unconscious. After you and the lad left, I directed my brain toward the task of figuring what might have happened. It wasn't long before I had the answer. And what was that, Sir Mycroft? Miss Lane had been captured by a band of desperados who had mistaken her for the Countess Wojewska. Realizing their mistake, they had returned her to the hotel and would now try to get hold of the real Countess. You've hit the nail square on the head, Sir Mycroft. That's exactly what's happened. Uh, you mean the beggars have actually made off with the Countess? Yes. You see, after we left you, we went to room 24, where I intended to have matters out with the man in the red fez. Yes. And instead of finding red fez in room 24, we found another man. Yeah, a guy with a beard and a long cigarette holder. The Count, you see. Oh, yes. Well, we soon discovered that the Countess had been spirited away. Uh, then the Countess is now in the hands of the ruddy beggars who kidnapped Miss Lane, eh, what? I'm afraid so. Speaking of laws, where is she? Oh, I, I took her to the Oxford and Cambridge Hotel, a little place in the east end of town I know quite well. Oh. I uh, just had a hunch something might happen to her if she remained in the other place, you know, so I got a room for her and saw to it she'd be comfortable. She's there now, none the worse for her experience, except for a rather large bump on her head. What I want to know is, what are you doing here disguised as a fortune teller? And where's the fortune teller? Uh, behind that wall over there, all trussed up like a Christmas turkey. What? You mean you... Oh, trifling matter, really. I bumped him on the head a little, and that was that. But why? Why? Also easily explained. I deduced, you see, that the fortune teller had a hand in the little game that was being played. Ergo, if I were to become the fortune teller, I might learn something of vital importance. <laughs> Uh, so far, nothing's turned up. Well, something may at any moment. The man in the red fez is supposed to show up here to pay off your Christmas turkey, then. Oh. Now, you go on pretending to be that fortune teller. Jim and I'll wait over in that doorway. When red fez shows up, let me handle everything. That's right, sir. Come along, Jim. Start fortune telling, Sir Michael. Right you are. I'll tell your fortune, Effendi. Read future in the sand. Fortune. Hours passed as Kent and Jimmy and Sir Mycroft waited for the man in the red fez to make his appearance. Gradually, the crowd in the street thinned out, and the cold night wind blew through the alleys and bazaars. Realizing at last that red fez did not intend to appear, Kent, Jimmy, and Sir Mycroft decided to make their way back to the hotel where Lois was staying. They had reached a rather lonely street known as the Road of the Kava when suddenly Kent stopped short. Wait a minute. What is it, Mr. Kent? I say, see something, do you? Plenty. Look across the street there. See that man moving along, keeping close to the buildings? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Say, I didn't notice him before. He's deliberately trying to keep out of sight. Well, if he wants to keep out of sight, let him. Oh, right you are, by Joe. We've got sufficient troubles of our own without messing in someone else's. Listen to me, both of you. That man is Count Wajeska. What? Are you sure? Positive. How can you tell, Mr. Kent? Gosh, I, I can hardly see him from here. Well, I... Uh, that is, he, he happened to pass close to that street lamp back there. Well, I say, by Joe, what's the ruddy beggar doing out here at this odd hour? What? I don't know, but I intend to find out. I'm going to shadow him. What? That's right. Now, you two go on to the hotel where Lois is and keep her company. I'm going to follow our friend, the Count. Can we go with you? It'll be easier and safer if I follow him alone. That's right, you are. Well, the Oxford and Cambridge is right down this side street. Come along, laddie. Good luck, Ken. Thanks, but I don't really think I'll be needing Oh, a good man, Kent. Plenty of nerve, what? Good man to have with you in a spot. Well, that's hard to say. Mr. Kent is so funny. Sometimes he's brave, and other times he's so scared he faints. I never could make him out. Neither could Miss Lane. Is that so? Interesting. Very. <clears throat> well, uh, here's the hotel. Come along in, Jamie, my boy. Right with you. Yes, I'll get the key to Miss Lane's room at the desk. Uh, <clears throat> I say, you there behind the desk. Wake up. Uh, wake up. Uh, uh. Oh. Yes, well, now that you're awake, you can let me have the key to my room. I say, get out of this hotel. What? 
Don't you see that sign there? No beggars or street fakers allowed. Get out now. He doesn't recognize you, Sir Mycroft. He's still wearing that fortune teller's outfit in grease paint. Well, who by Jove, of course. <laughs> Look here, old fruit. This is just a disguise, then, you know. Masquerade and all that. <laughs> Underneath these rags beats the heart of a true British art. Oh, is that so? What's your name? Bittersweet. Sir Mycroft Bittersweet. Oh, yes, of course. I have a message for you from the young lady. Uh, you have... What young lady? You don't mean Miss Lane? Oh, golly, don't tell me she's not here. Yeah, she left about an hour ago. Asked me to tell you she was going to the old mosque. The old mosque? Well, what the bloody devil has she gone to that abandoned Arab temple for? I'm sure I don't know, sir. Well, we've got to act. Come along, Jamie, me boy. We're going to that old mosque as quickly as... Soon, Abu, this business will be finished. With the money we shall receive, we shall then be able to retire from a mode of life which I assure you... So one of my delicate temperament is highly distasteful. You were always one for making high and mighty speeches, Master. You talk too much. It has been in my mind, Abu, for many a moon to curb your tongue. You do not accord me the respect that is due my position as leader of our little band. You will get from me all the respect you deserve, which is none at all. Oh, you wound me deeply, Abu. Can it be that you dislike me? Who can dislike what does not exist? I understand you now. I will explain. When first I joined your band, you were a good, clean, honest desperado. If someone wanted someone else put out of the way, we did the job quickly and efficiently in the best business-like manner. The job was done, the money paid, and there was no to it. Mm, cut and dry business. No imagination. That may be, but uh, who wants imagination? I want money. Mm. Oh. Such a thing to say. Had I known you felt this way, I should never have permitted you to join my band. Not have permitted me? Ah, you you begged me to join. You literally came to me on your hands and knees. Join my band, Abu, you said. Please join my band. No one can cut throats like you can. Well, that's true. Well, I'm sick of you and your red fez and your theatrical productions. We're given the job of putting the Countess Vajeska out of the way. Do we do a workman like job of it? No, no, no. We have to hire a fortune teller and some long haired flute player. For what, I ask you? For what? To lend an air of mystery to the proceedings. To give the man who hired us a little something for the large sum of money he will pay. All you were asked to do was to put the countess out of the way. She is still, so far as I can see, in very good health. We shall take care of that in good time. There is no better time than the present. But come, I will go into the next room and take care of her at once. You will do nothing of the sort. I've arranged a perfect finale for this little business, and I... Someone is knocking at the door. Obviously. Open it. Open it yourself. Careful, Abu. Remember who is master here. Open that door. Open it yourself. Abu, I prefer not to use force. Come another step toward me and I will give you this knife. Really, Abu, I sometimes think... By the beard of Allah, how long does it take you to open a door? Now, now, CD. Now, now, yourself. I bring with me a beautiful captive in the best traditions of our business and I'm forced to rap until my knuckles are raw. A beautiful captive? You, you say you bring a beautiful captive? Yes, the truth. I caught her snooping around outside. Bring her in, man. Take your hands off me. You hear what I said, you tin horn imitation of Well, a... Miss Lane, we meet again. Allah, be merciful. It's the girl we mistook for the countess. This means more trouble. Trouble for Miss Lane, I'm afraid. All right, Zidi. Take your men and go. Uh, before we go, when do we get paid? As soon as we get rid of the countess. Uh, all right, I go. Come, man. Well, Miss Lane, I suppose you tell us what you were doing in this vicinity. Does it really matter? No, I don't suppose it does. Abu, would you be good enough to bind her hands behind her back? Since you put it that way, not at all. There's no need to tie me up. There's every need, Miss Lane. We shall not only bind you, but gag you as well. I would rather you and the Countess Jessica did no talking while you are together. You mean I'm to be placed in the same room with the Countess? Of necessity. It is the only room left beside this one, since the mosque was practically torn down stone by stone by that amazing individual in the red cape. And the Countess is still alive. Yes, worse luck. We could have put her out of the way long ago. Now, hold still while I make these knots secure. Abel, will you... Will I tie knots and answer doors as well? I am the master here. It is I again. What is it this time, Zidi? I have two more captives. 
Only this time they are not beautiful. Two more? So. One looks like a fortune teller, but talks like an Englishman until I gagged him. The other is a boy. He did not talk so much, but I gagged him anyway. Jimmy, it must be Jimmy and Sir Mycroft. Bring them in. With pleasure. Bring them in, man. Jimmy! Sir Mycroft, why did you follow me here? I should never have left that message. They cannot answer you, I'm afraid, since they are well gagged and we had best leave them that way. That is right. There's too much talk around here as it is. With this, I agree. Too much talk and too little action. Already all of Mecca is beginning to descend upon us here. I say, let's stop talking and do our job. Let us put the Countess and the rest of these people out of the way. Oh, no, let, us, let us not be rash. We must wait until our employer arrives. I've arranged the finale, the like of which... A puck's on you and your finales. Was it in our agreement with our employer that we were to stage an entertainment for him as well? No. No, get rid of the Countess is what he said, and get rid of the Countess is what we should do. No more, no less. Wait a minute. You mean that you were hired to do this job? You didn't kidnap the Countess to hold her for ransom? Of course not, my child. You see... Well, enough of this, Master. Yes, Abu. Henceforth, you are no longer the Master. What? I hereby call upon the members of this band to join me in rising up against you. If anything is to be done, it must be done now. Let us get rid of the Countess and these others at once. We must wait and We to... wait for nothing. Sidi, you others, are you with me? Excellent. A stand back, Master. We now take matters into our own hands. You will regret this. You will regret it more than us if you do not hold your tongue. Sidi, bring the Countess in here. At once. You mean that you, you're going to kill us? All of us? I uh, regret, but uh, that is exactly what I mean. But you can't do that. You can't. You hear? You can't. Benelli, gag her. Stop it. I'm an American citizen. Oh. Oh. Here's the Countess, Abu. Good, good, good. Now then, place them all against the wall. The Countess, Miss Lane, the boy, the old man. We shall make short work of them. Hark, listen. The temple bells strike the hour of midnight. <laughs> Even the time is right. As the Arab desperados prepare to put an end to Lois, Jimmy, the Countess, and Sir Mycroft, Clark Kent is shadowing Count Majesca through the narrow, windy streets of Mecca. Suddenly, Kent stops short, steps into a doorway, and in a moment emerges in the blue and red costume of Superman. Now, we'll take care of that, Count. Who are you? Let go of me. Not until we have a little talk, Count Jessica. How do you know my name? Who are you? Never mind that. What are you doing sneaking along this street? What business is it of yours? I'm going to make it my business. To begin with, where is your wife? And back or I'll blow you to pieces. With that little toy pistol, don't make me laugh. Stand back, I said. Stand back. Now, I'll relieve you of that ugly weapon. Oh, here. What? Give me back that gun. Oh, no, you might hurt yourself. Guns are dangerous things. Now, suppose you tell me what you're up to. Let me go. You're killing me. Not quite yet, but I will, unless you start explaining a few things in a hurry. Uh, stop. I will tell you anything you want to know. Talk fast. Who kidnapped your wife? Where is she? Who's holding her for ransom? Nobody is holding her for ransom. She was kidnapped because I wanted her put out of the way. Why? I have been dependent on her... For as long as I can remember for any money I ever had. To make more money, I tried gambling. Lost heavily. I have many debts which must be paid or I shall go to jail. Disgraced forever. I knew my wife would never give me the money if I asked for it. There was only one other way. Her money, all of it, comes to me when she dies. And so I hired this band. Why, you... <coughs> Please, please don't hit me again. Where's the Countess now? Quick, where is she? There is an old and abandoned mosque on the edge of the town. Yes, I know it. Is that where she is? Yes, yes. That is the headquarters of the Arab band. Thanks for the information. And now, just so you won't see more than is good for you... <coughs> now then. I've got to get to that mosque, and fast. Up, up, and away! <sighs> I have always been, and I will continue to be, master of this band, Abu. I warn you. You have proved yourself a poor master. From here on, I, Abu, am the leader. Those four lined up against the wall are in the way. They must be removed. 
Then perhaps we shall be able to get our money from our employer, the Count. Oh, Jessica is a Count, a member of royalty. We must employ a certain delicacy, a certain artist. Delicacy, artistry. No. We eliminate these people and collect our fee. That will be the end of it. I, your new master, have spoken. Are you all agreed? Did it again, Babu? Aye. Is well. Now then, good people, I'm about to read this world of your press. Uh, oh. Ah, yes, I know it is a terrible thing, you will say. But, my friend, we have wives, and our children need sandals. Is that not so, C.D.? It is so, truly. It cannot be helped. Allah has so willed it. Blindfold them, C.D. Yes, master. Already they call you master, eh, Abu? You still challenge my right to be so called? Certainty. When this is over, I will deal with you in my own way. They are blindfolded, master. Good. Now to dispatch these four as quickly as possible. What say you, C.D.? Gun or knife? Uh, Bullets are expensive. Use the knife. It costs nothing. Very well, the knife. Stand back. May I come in, gentlemen? By the beard of the prophet, who are you? The name is Superman. Oh, no. I, I've never heard the name before. Did he? Throw him out. With pleasure, master. Sir, you and the fanciful red cape yes. are interfering with important business. Oh. So out. Wait. Uh, what are you doing? Put me down. Put me down. Oh, 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 the prophet, look how he holds Sidi at arm's length with one hand, uh, as if he were a feather. Who's the head of this band? Well, come on, speak up. Who's the leader here? He, he, he is. is. Stop he is. pointing at one another. Which of you is the leader? I swear to you, Fendi, he is, Abu. And I swear to you that he is. He who is wearing the red pants. All right, then, both of you. Untie those four people and be quick about it. If we do that, you will not harm us, Fendi. You'll do it whether I intend to harm you or not. And after that, my friends, I'm going to take you to police headquarters. Police headquarters? I... Woe is me... Whoa, is me. And so ended Superman's Arabian adventure. Not another day was to pass, however, before Superman, as Clark Kent, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane were in the thick of another baffling and dangerous mystery. It all began the following morning as Kent, in his hotel room, was finishing a cable dispatch to the Daily Planet. Listen. Boy, you sure can pound that machine. Think I'll ever be able to type like that? Oh, it takes years of experience and a special aptitude for typing to do as well as I'm doing. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> of course I am. There, that's that. Well, you want to come on down to the telegraph office with me? I'd like to cable this to the chief as quickly as possible. Sure thing. Oh, by the way, Mr. Ken, is Miss Lane up yet? No, I haven't seen her. She's sleeping late this morning. I guess you could all use some rest after what you went through. Oh, we certainly could. Golly, you're lucky you weren't there. Of course, we were saved in the nick of time by Superman... But up until he arrived, it sure looked like the end for all of us. Now, it's amazing how Superman always manages to be on hand when he's needed most. Well, I guess that's one of the things that makes him so super. Well, we have a visitor. Come in. Leaping mackerel, who's this? Um, what, what can I do for you? You are a Fendi Clark Kent. That's right. Permit this humble person, then, to cast his most low and despicable body at your gracious and benevolent feet. Jumping Jiminy, look at him down on the floor. Quiet, Jim. Arise and uh, state your business. I rise only since you request it. Um, what can I do for you? I bring you a message from his sacred presence, the Sheikh Hassan Mohammed. What's the message? That you present yourself at your convenience in the pavilion of the Hundred Fountains. The Sheikh is and Mohammed would have words with you. The Sheikh wants words with me? There might be a story in that, Jim. Could be. I can come immediately if you wish. If you will follow me, I will lead you to the pavilion of the Hundred Fountains. Come on, Jim. This smells like adventure. Boy, I've always wanted to meet a real honest-to-goodness Sheikh. Kent and Jimmy were led by their guide through crooked, narrow bazaars, teeming with the colorful life of the ancient Arabian city. Finally, they reached what appeared to be a vast estate surrounded by a high stone wall. They entered, and in a short time found themselves in the pavilion of the Hundred Fountains. Not only could be heard the soothing sound of the fountains, but the voices of many birds which roamed the spacious grounds at will. Seated on silken cushions near the edge of one of the fountains, Kent and Jimmy awaited the arrival of the sheik. Suddenly, a gong sounded. 
Jake. Jose Mohammed. Here he comes, Jimmy. Get up. Wow. Look at him. Please to be seated, Paul. Thank you, Excellency. Thanks. You are Clark Kent, the American newspaper reporter? That's right. I have heard much about you in the last week. Mr. Kent, as you can see, I am old, very old. There is little left to live for. Soon I shall die. Before I die, however, I have a heartfelt desire to look once again upon my son, whom I have not seen in many years. That is why I have called you here. I want you to find my son and bring him back to me. Have you any idea where he is? Yes, in Africa. Africa? Golly. I will explain. Fifteen years ago, my son, a young man of 25, was filled with the spirit of adventure. It was not enough that he should live here quietly and help me govern our people. No, he must go abroad seeking adventure. Fifteen years ago, he set forth in search of a lost tribe of pygmies somewhere in the Belgian Congo in darkest Africa. I have had no word from him to this day. It may be that he's dead. Yes. No, he's not dead. I know that in my heart. My son lives, and I want him brought back to me. I have sent six expeditions in search of him. Not one man of all those who went, not one has ever returned. Golly. When I learned of your presence in Mecca, hoped that I might see my son rose within me. Will you do as I ask? I will pay you handsomely. Well, I, I don't know. You see, I'm not a free agent. I work for a newspaper, and I'm here in Arabia on a special assignment. Okay, but your employer, he might say yes. Money is no object. Yes, he might. A side trip to Africa wouldn't hurt as a story for the paper, either. Should his answer be yes, you will leave as quickly as possible for the Belgian Congo by private plane. As to your reward, you may ask of me anything it lies within my power to give. As you can see, I am fabulously wealthy. Well, thanks, but the money doesn't interest me. If my editor consents, I'll be happy to do all I can to locate your son. If you can do it, if you can find him, you will make the last days of an old man worth living. Well, I'll do my best, Excellency. Perhaps we'd better get started immediately. I had intended to cable a story to America before your messenger arrived. I can do both of these things at the same time now. Splendid. Would you return here then this evening? Yes. We shall have dinner together. We can go over the maps I have of the Belgian Congo. All right. Uh, they are the maps that once belonged to my son and are complete in every detail. Good. I shall have you escorted back to your hotel. No need of that. No, we, we can make it alone. We'll return here tonight then. Oh, by the way, there's a young lady with us. May we bring her to? Of a certainty. Very well then. For the present, goodbye. Till we meet this evening, so long, Effendi. Reaching the gate outside of the Sheik's estate, Kent and Jimmy make their way into the crowded streets and back to their hotel. Mr. Kent, do you think Mr. White will let us go to Africa? I think so, Jim. Little point in remaining here. Hardly anything stirring. I'll say as much in my cable. Golly, I certainly hope he comes through this time. Oh, don't you worry about it. We'll send the cable. Look out, Mr. Kent. Oh, Jim, what? Up there in that window, a man. What? He's got a knife. He's throwing it at you. Look out. What? Mr. Kent. That knife hit you and, and you're all right. Oh, the, 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 the handle hit me, Jim. But the blade. It shattered. Splintered into a dozen pieces. Well, it probably broke when it hit the ground. Come on, we've got to get inside that house. I want to find out who threw that knife and why. Come on, Jim. Who did throw the knife and why did he throw it? Has it anything to do with Clark Kent's proposed trip to Africa? Something's brewing, and you can be sure it's something exciting, so don't miss Monday's episode. Listen every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station. Tune in and follow the adventures of Superman. Well, there goes Superman until Monday. Meanwhile, don't let the weekend go by without buying your share of war-saving stamps. And remember what I told you at the beginning of the program, you fellows and girls who are too young to join the armed forces or any of the national defense organizations. You can do your part. You can help win this war by buying war-saving stamps regularly. So talk it over tonight with Mother and Dad. 
Ask them to give you a dime every day or even every other day for war-saving stamps. And see if you can't get your friends to buy stamps regularly, too. Or better yet, why not organize a war-saving stamp club right in your neighborhood? Get all your members to talk with their parents and families and friends about the importance of buying war-saving stamps regularly. And make this your slogan. Every time you've got a dime, buy a war-saving stamp. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leave tall buildings at a single bound. Look! Look in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Follow the adventures of Superman every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.